have a few videos out with teaching how to make fire cider and kind of going really in depth on what fire cider is. Um, so I'll put those videos down below. And then I also have some videos of us, my mom and I, which she's not here. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get her back with me soon on some of these videos. Um, we've just kind of had a little bit, a little bit of a lot of things with, you know, life. But anyways, I'll put those videos of us making the fire cider and going into detail and kind of showing you how we make them. But fire cider is pretty awesome. It is very good for your immune system. It's essentially a, a technique of putting ingredients that are packed full of goodness. We have lemons, limes, oranges. I know I put cranberries in here. Uh, this is actually, we call this one winter moon fire cider because we typically will make it on a cold winter moon night and let it set up. But it has a lot of horseradish, black pepper, rosemary, garlic, turmeric, and jalapeno peppers. And it is really good for boosting your immune system and, and out just offering that just that support during the months that you really need it. And I woke up this morning with a little bit of a tickle in my throat and I was like, oh no. <laughs> I have not been doing a very good job taking my own, taking my own fire cider. And the reason is because the bottle that we did have in our kitchen started to kind of go out, out of date. Now that's a big question that we get asked quite often is what's the shelf life of fire cider? And you'll see where it's anywhere from any, honestly, six months, eight months, that's about average. Um, but some people will say that it can last up for a year. I haven't had much luck with fire cider lasting that long. One, because we have a wood burning stove in our, in our home. And so temperature wise, we're kind of fluctuating all over the place. And so, and then the other thing is, is I think that we added honey to that bottle. So it kind of started to like ferment a little bit and kind of, I, I think I was making like fire cider hooch in all honesty. Um, but anyways, I knew that I had a jar up here that we needed to go ahead and and press off uh, for, for a new bottle for me to bring down into the house. Because if it's not in front of me, I'm not gonna take it. That's just the type of person I am. So. I am going to be putting this <laughs> right beside my coffee and give you some really good advice. Drink your coffee. Well, depends on what type of person you are. Are you, are you, do you get up and you brush your teeth right away or do you get up and you make yourself coffee and then brush your teeth? Because what you don't wanna do is you don't want to take a, a shot of fire cider after you brush your teeth. Don't ask me how I know, just trust me on that. So I'm gonna put this right beside my, my coffee maker so that I have it available. It's right there. I'm gonna see it. I might even put a sign on it, maybe with some flashing lights, you know, set a reminder on my phone, all of that, which does help too. If you're the type of person like me, sometimes setting reminders on your phone, that's, that's a really good, um, a good thing. Also too, I think I'm gonna keep a small bottle of fire cider in my purse, just in case if I have to like get up and run out the door. Anyways, fire cider is great for boosting your immune system. It offers so many properties. Um, between the turmeric, the black pepper, all of it. If you are interested in learning how to make it, I will put the link down below showing you a few videos um, that we've, what we've made in the past with it. And what's really fun about fire cider is that you can make, you can make pretty much any recipe that you want. You can add so much into it. I recently saw um, somebody who made fire cider and they added um, hibiscus in it. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> that's really pretty. I have seen people also offer uh, elderberry into their fire cider as well. And I thought that was kind of interesting. But anyways, it's gorgeous. And it is, it's time to, it's time to fill up our bottles again. I've shared in the past that I've used a, a cheese press that I have. I used to want to make a lot of cheese with dairy goats a long time ago, but our homestead 
Our homesteads changed throughout the years. Things that I thought I wanted to do, I realized that I didn't. Um, so I have this really nice cheese press and I've learned that it works great with herbs. However, that I will save for another day. And the reason is, is because I, I've, I've had people ask me if uh, they need to invest in a cheese press like that. At the time that I bought that, I think it was probably about seven years ago. And seven years ago, the price of cheese presses were so much cheaper than what they are now. You can do this without the press. Instead of me using my press this time, all I'm gonna use is a big pot. I also have a little a glass pot that I have because it has a little spout on it, so it makes it a little easier for me to pour. I do have my strainer, um, and I'm also going to use cheesecloth. If you guys have been following me for a hot minute, you guys know that I tend to spill and pour things all over the place, and so to keep my mom happy, I'm using a tray. Look, look mom, I'm using a tray. <laughs> I think she'll be happy. I think she'll be happy with me. Yeah. This is just a little bit of wax paper. And the reason why I use wax paper on the, on the rim of my jar, especially over apple cider vinegar, I've noticed the apple cider vinegar will eat up the lid, eat up the, the ring to your jar. So it, it, I've had it to where I haven't been able to open jars before. And a little trick that you guys can put in your back pocket, especially if you're setting up a tincture alcohol wise, sometimes the alcohol or the ACV will make the jar feel stuck. So you can actually take that jar and run hot water over top of the ring and that'll help. That'll help get, get the ring off. Look at those beautiful cranberries. We added cranberries in because we were able to get them on sale. Nice organic cranberries. And they also offer medicinal properties as well. But it's it's actually really pretty. Got a bigger one. And I'm just going to, I know this is a big piece of cheesecloth, but trust me, I think this is gonna work just fine. If your nose is congested, woo! A little bit of horseradish. Well, that's gonna do it. All right. <laughs> squeeze out, squeeze out. Look at all that goodness. The garlic in it. Let's see if I can find it. The garlic, good garlic and fire cider. Uh, tends to turn blue because of the sulfur, the natural sulfur, but the turmeric has turned a lot of this very orangey yellow. The reason why I grabbed a big piece of cheesecloth is because you could, if you had time, just hang this over or you twist it really, really tight. I'm gonna put some gloves on just because that fire cider when it gets on your hands. <laughs> I don't know if my husband's gonna want me cuddling up to him tonight if I smell very um, fire cider-ish. You just squeeze. I think I've pretty much gotten it out, all out. All right. The horseradish has definitely opened up my nose. I can breathe. I can breathe. This is what we're left with. It's, I just spilt it. Oh my gosh. Let me just wipe that up real quick. Making a huge mess. I'm making a huge I don't know how not to make a mess, guys. And I I can't I can't apologize, but it is what it is. Good thing is I have at least it on a tray. There we go. See I like the spout. I wish my big one had a spout. I might only need 
possibly one bottle. But we'll see. But if I have any extra, what I'll do is I'll probably pour some in a little bottle to go. Yep, I'm going to. Sweet. All right, this will be a good size for on the go. This one is done. I'm going to put the, the lid on it because I will, I'll probably, knowing me, I'll probably spill it. And this one's gonna be on the go. Oh, look at that. Man, that's perfect. Fire cider. Definitely something that I needed. Definitely something that I am due to continue to take. I shared with you guys uh, about this cute little label maker and how it really just brought back in the 90s to me. But anyways, I was excited because a lot of people are starting to label their, their uh, products, their tinctures with this label maker. I'm gonna call this one Winter Moon because Winter Moon is the only name that we have ever named our fire cider because we make it on a winter full moon night and we enjoy sipping it throughout the winter. Put about a teaspoon of honey in in a cup. You can go a little bit more if you want. That horseradish. Um, before you drink anything, whether it's a tincture or you know a tonic like like fire cider, shake it up. See what happens is any of the sediment sometimes falls to the bottom, and you want to to mix it up so that you um, have as much goodness as possible. I just do, I just do a little bit. Oh my gosh. Anyways, yeah, you guys are not going to see that. Okay. So it'd probably be like about half of a shot glass or yeah, I do about half of a shot glass. Bottoms up. Woo. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's got some heat. Um, it's definitely, <laughs> it's not bad. Um, it's got a twang to it, so it always hits you, kind of. But the jalapeno, the heat to it is what I feel. And then obviously the apple cider vinegar. And then you get the twang from all of the citrus that's in it. Uh, but you, you really get the heat from that, from that, the jalapeno and the horseradish. It doesn't burn your tongue though. So it's not that type of heat. It's just a... Mm, it's definitely, it's not bad, not bad. It's a heck of a lot better with honey. Most of the times when we're up here, we'll just take it straight as it is. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys how I kind of did it because that was a lot of people's questions is what your dosage. I will do fire cider. Um, when I'm going strong with fire cider, I, I take it like before I leave the house in the morning and in the evening. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye, guys.